and Braco is the best open source CMS in the world. Fact. And if you're watching this video, then I'm assuming that you've got an interest in Braco. You want to know how to install it and you want to know how to configure your Windows machine for development use. Well, this video has got you covered. Okay, so what we want to do first is ensure that the web server installed. Now, because we're using Windows, we're going to use IIS. Now, the things that we want to make sure is IIS is installed. We want to make sure that ASP.NET is uh, correctly configured so that we can run 4.7.2. If we don't do that, then Umbraco won't work and the installer will fail. We also want to make sure that we have the right modules installed. Now, we won't be using these modules for this video, but as you're setting up in Braco, it's good to set this up now. So what we want to do is make sure that we have the application initialization module installed. And we also want to make sure that URL rewrites are installed. So the first thing we do is check the IS installed. We can do this by using the Windows turn on and off feature checker. So if we do feature and then up there, we can see turn features on and off. In here we have all the available functions. So what we want to do is make sure that IS is installed. That should be under information, internet information services. As you can see, we can expand this little jobby here, expand this jobby. Now what we want to check that in application development features, we have application initialization installed. We also want to make sure that we have ASP.NET 3.5, 4.8. If you really want to, you can put classic ASP. Like, no one really uses it anymore, but it's always useful. And the other thing that we want to make sure is that we have our plugins. Now, when we look at our plugins, we go into the common HTTP features. And in here, we want to make sure that we have HTTP redirection. Now, this is going to be really useful because it's going to allow us to do 301 redirects and all that sort of good stuff later on. Okay, so to get this website up and running, we're going to need to configure IIS. Now IIS is the Windows web server. And the reason why we need this is we need a way to somehow map our requests that we make in a browser to our local web files. Now, normally when you uh, type in a request, say google.com, you'll get a request to the internet. Instead, what we want to happen is when someone types in a request through Chrome, We'll use a specific host name. The host name will then redirect to IIS and IIS can then load up our Umbraco website. To configure IIS, we can go to our search down the bottom, click on the little search icon, type in internet information. As we can see, it pops up. Now, this is IIS in action. When we expand the little down arrows, we can see that we only have this thing called default website installed. Now, what we want to do to run a local Umbraco website locally is to create our own website. Now, to create a website, we go to add website. In here, we create a site name. This can be anything we want. I'm going to call mine jdj.local. The physical path is where the web root files are going to be stored. Now, we're not doing that yet but I'm going to install mine in a directory called JDJ local. So I'll point it there. And then the host name is what we discussed a few seconds ago. Now I'm going to call mine JDJ.local. Now this is going to be the URL that I'm going to access my local development website in Chrome locally. Now we'll set that up now. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is create and configure a host name that will work with our local development PC. Now, the thing to remember when we're doing this is that we'll be working with a file called the host file. It's a special lockdown file, so you'll need a text editor opened with admin privileges to update it. If you don't do this, Windows will get its knickers in a twist and it will complain and throw errors and prevent you from saving the file. Let's start by opening our host file. This can be found by going into the C drive, going to Windows, then going to system 33, 32, sorry. In here, we're gonna to go to drivers and then we're gonna to go to ETC and then we're gonna find our hosts file. Now we're gonna open this with Visual Studio Code. When you open Visual Studio Code, you're gonna find something like this. I've got Docker installed, which does some fancy stuff as well. But what you wanna do is map your local IP address, which is 127.0.0.1, and you're going to want to map that to our new hostname. So 
So in our instance, it's jdj.local. Now when I click save, we should see uh, this insufficient permissions and click yes, and that is saved. Okay, so with the host name set up, we're just gonna quickly look in IIS and make sure that our website's using the correct version of .NET and that we're using the correct permissions. Now, if we don't use the correct folder permissions, what will happen is that when we try and install Embraco, things will fail because the installer will not be able to write to the web route. So to do this, what we're gonna do is go into IIS, go into this little application pools tab. In here, you should see a entry for your website and you just wanna make sure that it's set to 4.0. Perfect. Now, if it's not set to four, change it. Otherwise, the installer is going to go tits up and nothing's going to install. So to check the uh, folder permissions for our website, right click on it, do edit permissions. From here, go to the security tab. And then from here, we can see that we don't have the correct users or permissions for our website. So this means that the installer will fail if we don't change it. So to add the correct permissions, there's two ways of doing it. So if we want to go for the hacker local development route, which shouldn't be used in production, what we want to do is add the everyone. Now, this is the lazy man's way of doing it. You probably will bump into loads of people who do it in production, but you shouldn't really. But what we're going to do is add the everyone permission and we need to make sure that it have modified permissions. This means that IIS, your website, will be, up to, will be able to update the web route and install files when we're going through the installation process. Now, if you click apply, then that's all our permissions installed. If you want to do this the professional and correct way, it's a little bit more long-winded. What you want to do is go to this advanced tab and then from here click find now. Now from this find now you'll see this screen. In here you want to find the network service account. And you'll also want to put the IISI users account Again, you want to add both of those, make sure that they have modified permissions, and then that should hopefully allow everything, the correct permissions to update the files when the installer is running. Okay, so Umbraco uses a database to store its data. So whenever a content editor logs into the backend, creates a page, all that information is stored within a SQL database. Now, the most efficient way for development is configuring SQL Server so our Umbraco website can talk to our SQL Server. Okay, so to download SQL Express, what we do is in Google, do a quick search for SQL Express. Then we'll go to our Microsoft page, go to the download, and if we click Express Download Now, we should see that a download starts. So after the SQL Express installation has downloaded, double click on it and you'll be presented with this screen. For us, we're just gonna do a basic installation. Sell your soul, tick some T's and C's. I mean, whoever reads these nonsense, like, what's the point of even having it? Click Accept. As you can see, we're gonna install to a default location. Click Install, off it runs, job done, simple. The next thing is to install the SSMS Studio, so the SQL Server Management Studio. So if we go over to Google and then type in SSMS, what we should see is the Microsoft download page. At the top we have download SSMS. Click on that and off we go. Now you know that you need SSMS, I won't bore you watching me install it because it's very simple. You are a clever person, you do not need me to click a few buttons for you. So after installing SMS, it is time to configure our SQL Server so our Umbraco website can talk back to its database and everything can be magic. Okay, so now it's time to connect our database up so we can have a username and password connect to our SQL database, which means we can update our Umbraco connection string to work with our SQL Server database. So open up SSMS and you should be presented with a screen. Now, the first thing that we want to do is connect to the database engine. So we connect to a database. Now we're using Windows authentication at the moment because we haven't configured our username and password to log into SQL. And that is what we're gonna do now. So first connect, then on your server, right click on it, click properties. In our properties, you can go to security and in security, you should see server authentication. Now in here, you want to tick the SQL server and Windows authentication mode. 
So we've got that setting saved. It will not take effect until the SQL server is restarted. We'll do that shortly. Now, the other thing we need is a username and password to connect into SQL. Now, as we're doing development and it's on a local PC, we can cheat and you can use the SA account. If you really want to and want to be secure, you can create your own login, but we're lazy and we're developers and we want to do things quickly and easily. So on here, we just clicked on our SA account. Now, the next thing we want to do is click on status. In here, we need to make sure that the enabled option is selected. Now, the other thing you need to do is make sure you have a password. I know my password, um, but make sure you set something you know. Now, what we want to do is quickly go to our search again. We want to type in services. And what we're going to do is reset our SQL engine quickly, just so our new changes have been applied. So in here, what we're going to do is scroll down all the way to the bottom. In here, you should see a SQL server. We're going to reset our SQL server. Click yes. This should take a few seconds. And then perfect. So what we do is go back to our SQL, log out, disconnect, reconnect by clicking the connect object explorer. Now what we want to do is change our authentication to SQL server authentication. Now we've got our SA account, which is the username that we've set up previously. And if I type my password in wrong, it will not let you in. Now, if I type my password in correctly, it allows you to log in. And as you can see, that is pretty much all you need to do when configuring SQL. All you need to do is make sure that you have a user name and a password, which you can connect from Umbraco to your SQL server that will allow it to talk to the database. Simple. Okay, so next up is to configure Visual Studio. Now I will not insult your intelligence by installing on this video because it's fairly simple. Click next a few times, add a license key, job done. What we're gonna do is install a plugin which is gonna make our debugging lives a little bit easier. So when we're working with Embraco and we're debugging, one of the things that the you know default starter kit will say is, you know, click F5 and you can debug using Cassini. This isn't great, it doesn't make uh, debugging that easy. What we want to do is debug via IIS and our website that we're setting up. Now, reattaching to the IIS process each time you want to debug is a little bit painful and it takes ages. What we want to do is install a plugin called Reattach, and what we want to do is use that plugin to quickly reattach to our debugging process in IIS, which will speed up our development tremendously. Okay, so to install some extensions, just go to the extensions tab, manage extensions. Now, as you can see, we have all these amazing online ones. Things that I want to do is reattach. This is going to make debugging a little bit later much easier. We also want to do white space. Again, this is a very simple, easy plugin. It will just delete all your white space whenever you click save. It will just make your merges a little bit easier. Now, after resetting Visual Studio, we should have access to the plugins. Now, I've quickly opened a website just to give you an example of how Reattach works. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Debug, and then we're going to go to Attach to Process. Now, this is how you'll be debugging your Umbraco website. Now, what you want to do is click on the Show Processes from All Users. When we do that, you should be able to see that we have a W3S service. Now, as you can see, this points to our application pool. And this is how we can attach and debug. So when we click attach, attach to process, this is us good to debug. Now this means that we're talking to a website with an IIS and every single time we hit a breakpoint or we run our website, then the debugger will work. So the great thing about reattach is if we click stop, now instead of going through that process each and every time, if we click this, you can see that now we have a quick shortcut to attach to our every WPEXE, which is the IIS web service or your application pool. So doing that means that now we're quickly debugged and attached to our service. Now this is much quicker than having to click, you know, the F5, the green button, and waiting for Cassini to load each and every time you want to debug. So as you can see, quick little shortcut, but this will save you, you know, valuable times every single day.
So we're finally onto the fun bit. We can install Umbraco and actually play around with the CMS and do some cool things. So to install Umbraco, what we do is open up Visual Studio and then we go to create a new project. Umbraco is still using the older version of ASP.NET. So we're going to type in MVC. We can't use .NET Core, so we're going to use the .NET Framework web application. Click Next. Now what we want to do in here is give our project a name. I'm going to call mine jdj.local and I'm going to install it in that folder that we created a minute ago, which is also called JDJ local. And we need to make sure that the solution is using 472. This is really important. Otherwise the installer will fail. Now, when we're creating a new ASP.NET web application, you want to choose MVC and we don't want to use HTTPS and we're going to click create. Now the installer will go off and do its thing and eventually we'll have some files and we can run the Umbraco installer. Now with our newly created project and solution, we can install Umbraco. So Umbraco installed via NuGet. We can install it through the console, but for uh, simplicity to make this tutorial a little bit easier, we're going to install it through the NuGet Explorer. So right click on the solution and then do manage NuGet packages. From here, we're going to type in Umbraco and we should see a package called Umbraco CMS. Perfect. Now this is downloaded 2.29 million times. So obviously we're in great company. Loads of people are using it. So click on that install button. The installer will fire off and it will take a little time to um, run through and complete. So let's catch up in a minute. Okay, so when the installer runs, if you get asked to overwrite the global ASACs, click yes to all. If you wanna do that, allow Umbraco to install its bits and bobs. After the installer is finished running, you should be uh, presented with this beautiful Umbraco ASCII art. Now, as the instructions say, clearly at the top, don't forget to build before you try and run anything. So let's build the solution. If everything's worked correctly, then it should build. Now, the next thing we wanna do is then go to Chrome and then use our host name, jdj.local, to redirect. Now, we're getting this 3403 error. Now, the reason is that is probably because our web application in iOS is still pointing to the wrong location. Now, the way we can test this out is that if we go to jdj.local and do explore, what we should see is our web files, but instead we don't. So this is because when I set this up originally, we didn't do it correctly. What we wanna do is copy the actual folder location and you'll be able to tell the web route from you know, having this app data, app start, the web.config. Within iOS, what we want to do is then right click on jdj.local, do manage websites, advanced settings. In here, we're going to have this physical path. Paste in our new directory, the one which actually want the server to direct to. And there we have it. To test that this has worked correctly, let's just do explore. And as you can see, we've got our correct folder location there. Now back in Chrome, if we clicked reload, hopefully our website should load. When the website loads, we should see the Umbraco installer and through the Umbraco installer, we can install the database. So this is the Umbraco installer. Now we start the installation process by typing in a username and password. It is very important that you do not forget this username and password. So the username is going to be this email address and the password is going to be 101010101010. Perfect. Now, when we install, we have an option of install or customize. If you click the normal install, what will happen is the database will be installed using SQL Compact. We do not want this because this is not optimal for development. Instead, we want to hit the customize. Now, you do not care about doing a ASP.NET machine key. If you're using a load balancer or using multiple environments, this is something you may want to consider, but for local development, you don't really need to worry about it. So we will click continue. Now for our database type, what we want to do is select SQL Server. Now, for those of you who completely forget what your SQL Server is called, and this happens to me a lot, what we'll do is open up SSMS and then copy it 
from here. Now, because we haven't created a date race name, what I'm gonna do is show you the error that you might encounter if you forget to do this. Our login is gonna be our SA password that we created earlier. And as you can see, it's saying could not connect to a database. So let's quickly go back to SSMS. Let's get our database engine. Let's log in. And in here, I'm gonna create myself a new database. My database is gonna be called um, Braco. CMS. and the database owner is going to be the SA account if you are using a different username and login which to log into your SQL which you're more than welcome to do it's probably a little safer again you should be using SA in production then uh, have that as a database owner instead now when we go back to Umbraco if everything's configured we should be able to go to the next screen perfect now, when you're installing a Braco for the first time, I recommend you use the Start website. It's gonna come with a load of document types, a website, and everything for you to get started with. If you're a pro and you wanna start from, you know, completely blank and vanilla website, click no. But for us, let's go with the starter kit. Okay, so while this installs, let's quickly stop, have a breather, grab a coffee. Okay, so if everything's gone according to plan, you should see the Umbraco backend load up and you should see this welcome to Umbraco um, dialogue start tour. We don't wanna do that. Now, whenever I install Umbraco, the first thing I want to do is make sure I know what the username and password is to log in. Because if you don't do this, it's just a pain in the ass. So what we're gonna do is go to the top, click log out. And this is the email and password that we created in the installation process. So for me, should be john at johnbjones.com and the password was 10101010110. Cool, so I can log in and log out. That's everything I need. So let's have a quick tour of Umbraco. I won't go into the ins and outs of how to create anything because this tutorial is long enough. But as you can see in the home icon, we have a load of pages. And if we go to settings and document types, these are all the different document types which have been used to create these pages. Now, if we go to jdj.local, the website should load and we should see a sample site. Boom, as you can see, we have our sample site and it's loaded. Let's have a quick click around, make sure that the website works. We've got a developer, obviously a classic developer with a beard. Everyone loves a good beard. Contact us page, we've got some maps loading. As you can see, we have a sample site and you have everything you need be able to get up and running now with Umbraco. So we are finally done, finished. As you can see, it is very easy to install Umbraco and hopefully now you should know how to install it and configure your Windows PC for optimal Umbraco development experience. If you want to learn more about Umbraco and you want it in a more condensed format and you really like this video or you just want to support me, you could consider buying my book. It's available on Lean Pub now. It's $4.99 cheapest, $9.99 more expensive. It's got everything in there for uh, setting up your website, how to build pages, how to build a header and footer, how to launch a website, some of the things you need to think about when you're maintaining it, how to unit test stuff, all that good stuff. Also, if you want to learn more about Umbreco, a free resource is my website. It's johndjones.com. On there, there is literally 400 uh, articles, all free, just how to do everything on Braco version 6, 7 and 8. Head over there and you'll have a whale of a time, guaranteed. Anyway, hope this has been good for you. Happy coding.